Hey everybody, welcome to the Citizen, we'll call it a weekly recap. Mm. This week we have a, a decent amount to talk about, well, in terms of elections anyway. We've got uh, a bunch of races, Auburn City Council, which Greg Mason, he's our city reporter, he'll go over that. Uh, we've got Sam House here, she's our county, slash crime, slash courts, slash everything else <laughs> reporter. <laughs> uh, she, she'll go over the county legislature. And I'll tackle a couple of the town supervisor races and the statewide ballot proposition. So let's start with uh, some of the closer races. What do you guys, you know, which races uh, on, you know, on your respective beats uh, kind of surprised you? Uh, I would say that I didn't really expect to see, like, as much support for uh, Debbie McCormick as she might have gotten um, as a... Uh, well, how it worked out was Terry Cuddy got 2,531 votes. Debbie McCormick came in second with 2,166. Matt Smith, 55 votes behind her. And uh, and then the next two, Christy Angelis and Bill Graney, had uh, 1,048 and 871 votes, respectively. And uh, there was a lot of fire department support behind McCormick. I was sort of a little more expecting DeAngelis' ex experience to sort of get him more votes than he might have gotten. Former mayor of Auburn. Right? Former mayor of Auburn, former city councilor, former county legislator. But um, right now it's going to be a tight race between McCormick and Smith. Um, Cuddy's going to end up getting a seat, no doubt about it, with uh, 548 uh, absentee ballots out right now with about a little more than 300 of them returned as of yesterday. Um, so it'll come down to that and we've seen this in the past about mm -hmm. two years ago with the uh, city council race. And, um, councilors Camardo and Ruzica got voted in. Um, the split between Councilor McNabb and Councilor Ruzica was about 44 votes um, back wow. in 2011, and it came down to the absentees, right down to the wire. Granted, that was a lot closer than um, what this is right now because there wasn't like a Terry Cuddy gap between the candidates. There was more of a, you know, a little smaller gap between there. But Ruzica ended up. Um, with the absentees getting 50 more votes in McNabb, and here we are today with the current city council as it is. Yeah. So 55 votes isn't an impossible um, sort of way, but with the trends as they are right now, we may see a predominantly Democratic city council mm -hmm. come January. How about in the, uh, on the county legislature side? What do we have there? Well, um, the Democratic possibility is about the same as city council, but the most interesting race that's still kind of yet to be determined is between current legislator Tim Lattimore, a Republican, and newcomer Susan Martini, a Democrat. The split between them is only 10 votes right now, so with those absentee ballots out there, anything could really happen between the two. Um, but besides that, it was also a good night for Democrats. Uh, they picked up three seats. Two legislators were uh, kicked out, um, Dave Axton, a Republican, and Steve Barsky, also a Republican, by Ben Vitale and Frank Reginelli, both Democrats. Um, and it's interesting, right now the split in the county ledge is seven Democrats, seven Republicans, one conservative. And if Martini wins, then that'll make it an 8-7 split, which I believe is actually a historic uh, proportion, uh, Democrats having the majority. So definitely got interesting. Yeah, the uh, it seemed like with the with both races there were there were certainly uh, some level of surprises. I think with the county legislature we saw more of that with with the results with Democrats oh, yeah. picking up uh, a few seats and uh, you know it, the thing people you know if you don't pay attention to enrollment statistics, which most of you don't, fortunately, uh, we you know this this county you know outside of Auburn you know there's mm -hmm. a there's certainly a Republican en enrollment advantage there, and, and even Auburn's, you know, somewhat moderate. You know, there's certainly a decent number of Democrats, but, you know, to, for Democrats to pick that up, that was uh, certainly one of the bigger stories of, uh, of Tuesday night. Uh, but another big story, we had uh, uh, two town supervisor races that were uh, very close, and by very close, two supervisor races that are a combined seven votes apart. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we had uh, Jeff Herrick in Senate. Uh, he was... Uh, Going up against the challenger Democrat uh, Tom Gray, Thomas Gray, uh, which I believe there's a it's either four or three folks. Uh, it's one of those numbers. Yeah. Uh, but and on the on the other side you have Owasco, the supervisors race there. 
uh, where incumbent Ed Wagner, a Republican, is uh, narrowly ahead of uh, John Sosi, the challenger, the uh, Democrat. Yeah, I think Senate's three and the West Coast four. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think you got their numbers right there. So, you know, two close races, and we had, a, you know, close races, uh, I think, in in uh, all of our, you know, in Auburn City Council and Keweenaw County mm -hmm. Legislature. Uh, we certainly had all that covered. Um, in addition to obviously the local races, we had uh, statewide ballot propositions uh, last night. All of them passed. There were six of them on the ballot. Uh, all but one passed, uh, and that was uh, the only one that failed uh, was the judges increasing the retirement age for certain judges uh, from 70 years old to 80. Uh, this would have applied to Court of Appeals judges and State Supreme Court justices. Um, it was it was soundly defeated. Uh, the total votes actually uh, statewide, there were 1,430,577 votes against it, uh, 930,399 votes for it. Breaks down to about a 60 40 split. Um, so that one was, you know, that was the only one that didn't get uh, approved. Uh, the, you know, the big, the one getting the most attention is obviously the. Uh, the first proposal on the ballot yesterday, uh, which was authorizing casino gaming, uh, that passed uh, 57 to 43, uh, breaks down the vote totals 1,470,256 to 1,106,493. Um, there were some other ones. Uh, uh, the one that got the most support was the one that dealt with veterans, which doesn't, I don't think, surprise anybody. Uh, providing additional service, uh, su civil service credit for veterans with disabilities. Uh, this one passed uh, 84 to 16. So, you know, that that was a little Not bit expected. Surprising. Yeah, yeah, that was a little bit expected. Um, there, was, there were a couple Adirondack uh, land swaps on here. Both of those were approved. Uh, one dealt with disputed land in the uh, state forest preserve. This one passed 73 to 27 uh, in terms of percentages. Uh, the there's a separate land exchange that dealt with uh, land in the forest preserve, giving it to a mining company, uh, Nyko Minerals. Uh, that one passed a little narrower margin. This was the closest one that that actually passed. It was 53-47 split, uh, but you know it was a it was a good night uh, for those that supported casinos in New York. Uh, in Cuga County, it was uh, narrowly passed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a majority of Cuga County uh, voters supported it. So. You know that was, uh, you know that's pretty much it for the ballot proposition. So, you know, I guess we can close on one note. You know what? Uh, obviously, there's an absentee count. Uh, both of you are covering these races. You you have won, and Greg's got the big city council race. Uh, you know what? You know what should people, viewer, you know, readers and viewers expect? You know, as this process plays out. Um, well, they'll be counting up absentees. Uh, I think it's this coming Tuesday. And um, there's about, like I said, there's about more than 500 out for the city, um, more than 1,000 out for the countywide. Um, but with the city council specifically, um, I guess what you should look forward to is a council that, no matter who ends up on it, I suppose, um, you've seen in the past, Councilor John Camaro hasn't voted for cuts to the fire department, so whether it's a predominant Democratic councilor or whether Smith gets voted onto the council, I don't really see as much of a shakeup as we saw this past budget cycle mm -hmm. with the but, uh, fire department cuts, just because of how Camaro's voted in the past. But um, you never know. With um, He said that he's wanted to um, sort of restructure and work things out, so we'll see, and no department safe. So. Um, for the county, obviously the big one to watch is uh, Lattimore and Martini. And since it's only a 10 vote margin, anything is really possible. Um, but if Ms. Martini doesn't win, that'll mean a Cuga County Legislature without a single woman on it. Um, if she does, that'll be a legislature with a Democrat of, or a majority of Democrats, which is probably the first time ever. So no matter what, the legislature is kind of having a historic election. So this is uh, this is a series. I guess we can call it a series that we're starting. Uh, it'll feature various people. This week you get the three of us. Next week you could get three different people. Um, uh, we'll feature it on on the website every week uh, at almerpub.com. Also to check out uh, our great coverage of 
of the election 2013 results and the Auburn City Council race and Keuka County Legislature and all the other races, uh, make sure to check out auburnpub.com slash 2013 elections. So until then, uh, until next week, you know, we'll be back. Uh, you might see these faces again. You might not. It might be a, a different <laughs> set. We'll play it by ear. But uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, make sure you check out auburnpub.com auburnpub for the latest news.